you know, you, you come awake sometimes and you know there's somebody in the room with you, mm -hmm. but your eyes are shut. Whatever's standing in the room, if it's standing in the room, I'm going to hit it with a solid slug first. And so I hit this thing square in the chest. I mean, right here. I went to the balcony and looked over, expecting to see a body laying there. I lived in a, a hut that was off the ground in Nunkai. It was probably I don't know, 500 years old, this hut. It was uh, 15, maybe 17 feet off the ground. You went up and down through a ladder, a center hole in the hut. And when you got up at night, you pulled the ladder up, shut the trap door and put a pin through it. So that was security. Below you, uh, there was a walkway to the ladder, but inside that wired in area under the hut is where you kept the pigs. Pigs are a great alarm. You wake a pig up in the middle of the night, they start going crazy. So they make great alarms. So everybody keeps pigs under their hut. And uh, so I slept on a pad that was on the floor and I had a little candle, it's usually lit. And I had a beam that went across my head, maybe this high above my head. So I sat up too quick. I hit the beam. But on this side of the beam where my head would hit were two pins and I had a combat shotgun laying up there with uh, alternating solid slug triple X. That was my go-to weapon if something happened in the middle of the night. And this one night, well, I had an open balcony and had you wanted a window, you just cut a window with a chainsaw. Um, the bugs weren't bad because I had uh, lizards hanging off the ceiling that would run over and suck up the, the bugs flying in. Uh, anyway, it was a nice place to sleep and live. And uh, I had a cook and a maid and a gardener and a guard and I don't know what else and it was like 70 bucks a month so uh, I was sleeping there and you know you, you come awake sometimes and you know there's somebody in the room with you mm -hmm. but your eyes are shut and it's something wakes you up it's probably some very tiny noise that doesn't fit or something, but I became consciously awake and aware something was in the room with me, and I was laying with my eyes shut. So I had this whole thing in my head. I'm gonna roll to the right, taking the gun with me, and I'm gonna bring it to my chest and rack around as I roll over the candle to put the light out. And whatever's standing in the room, if it's standing in the room, I'm going to hit it with a solid slug first. And that's what I did. And everything worked like clockwork. And it was this figure of a human standing at the foot of the pad on the other side of the trap door, which was still locked and pinned, by the way. Pigs are not that sound, nothing. And so I hit this thing square in the chest. I mean, right here with a solid slug and it slammed it against the wall and it dropped in one knee and then stood up again. And I went, in my head I was thinking, shit, what kind of body armor is that? <laughs> <coughs> so I shot it again with a triple X and it almost dropped to a knee and then stood back up again and then took off for the balcony. And I think I hit it a third time as it was going over the balcony. And I'm a pretty good shot. I went to the balcony and looked over, expecting to see a body laying there. It was up on its feet, heading for the jungle already. And I was all I could think of was, I want the armor. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of, what the hell was that? And then I talked to the village chief about it. He gave it a name, I can't remember what he called it, but he said it was like an assassin. 
that people could take a plate of food or something into this place, a special place in the jungle, put a name on top and lay the plate of food out there. And this thing would read the message and hunt that person down and assassinate them. And I thought, nice story. <laughs> but I couldn't find any trails or anything, so I couldn't do anything about it. So that was in... 1972. Was there any was there any remnants of anything inside nothing. the hut? Absolutely nothing. Just shells. Just empty shell casings. No holes in the wall. Nothing. So, you know, I I could understand some flattened rounds or something from it. You know, triple X is just basically 1030 round ball peens. That had to do something. Yeah. But it didn't. And and whatever this armor is, it was taking it in and holding it in some way. So it was probably soft, some kind of soft armor. I, I don't know. <coughs> but. Wow. I, I didn't know what to do with that. So that was 72. Flash forward to probably 10 years ago now at the Monroe Institute, where I teach remote viewing and whatnot. I met a guy there at one of my talks. Uh, he was attending a gateway program, and uh, he was a cryptozoologist from, he said he was doing work for the Smithsonian at the time. I don't know if that was the same time he was in Thailand or not, but... He was a cryptozoologist. They hunt for animals that have never been seen before, or bugs or stuff like that that no one's ever seen. And he was telling me about this little deer that walked out of the jungles in Vietnam at the end of the war. No one had ever seen one. It was the size of a dog, little bitty thing. And it had horns that came out of its snout and went up its face around the eyes and it came over like two hooks and it based that was their nose they actually breathed through that while they were eating watercress because the water would always be up to here so they breathed through these horns while they ate watercress that's what their favorite food evidently no one had ever seen one before no one had ever eaten one or skinned it or anything there was no evidence that it had ever been seen before by anybody and they walked out of the jungle at the end of the war. And I was like, how does something do that? Wow. Go through the whole war of Vietnam and survive. You know, it's like with all the arc lights and the bombing and the shelling. And, wow. And he was telling me about that. He said, but that wasn't the most unusual thing that happened. I said, what was that? He said, well, we were way up in upcountry Thailand. Um, I think he said it was like due west of uh, Udorn and he said we were in we were under the protection of a paramilitary police force out of Thai, Thailand and they would set up a camp and they had these tents that they were walled tents they would set up and they had two cots in the tent and so wherever they set up to do a scouring of the jungle for these animals and bugs and things, they would put up three rolls of concertina wire and searchlights and all that kind of stuff and provide protection because there are a lot of bandits up there and whatnot. And he said, I was awakened one night by my partner in the bed next to me, in the cot next to me. And he said, when I looked over, there was this human figure on top of him strangling him, and he was choking. So he said, I can't remember what caliber pistol he said he had, but he, he reached in his boot, pulled his pistol out, and shot this figure in the side twice. And it rolled off onto the floor and got up and ran out of the tent. And by then, all the, the lights came on and all the guards fired some rounds in the air. And this thing shot across the 
area and went over the three rolls of concertina and vanished into the jungle. They couldn't say anything about it, but his friend had ripped out big chunks of hair in both hands, which they put together and put in an envelope and mailed it back to the whoever, whatever lab they used. So the next morning, they found a blood trail. So they followed it. And he said it went for a few kilometers, and it popped into a village. And they went to the village head, head man and talked to him, and he said, no, nobody was shot in the village that he was aware of. But his medicine man was sick. So they said, can we talk to your medicine man? And they said, sure. So they went and talked to the medicine man, and the medicine man was really ill. He was laying in the bed, and he had two bullet holes in the side. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.